Now, I took a lot of antibiotics during my bowel cancer uh, journey. Good old cancer. It's wonderful, isn't it? Insipid, horrible disease. Anyway, we're out the other side. We took a lot of antibiotics, didn't I? And that's why they say you should use probiotics. Even the nurses were telling me. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my son was telling me, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and finally, after having a lot of trouble going, if you know what I mean, somebody got me onto probiotics and I thought, well, this is working pretty well. I thought I'd get onto the microbiologist that's responsible for it, John Elliman, or, or one particular brand of it anyway. And, uh, geez, he's been around and done a fair bit. In fact, uh, he actually did a lot of study and conducted research into the fermentation of dairy cultures and a lot more. I thought I'd get him on the line this morning. John Elliman. Good morning, John. Good morning, Grant. How are you? Good. and cra Congratulations on your career. Pretty amazing stuff that you've done. Thank you very much. Mm. Now, why is it that people, and I'm, I put myself in that position, don't know a lot about probiotics? Yes, it, it, it is uh, an exploding area of research at the moment. And mm. I, I think the medical profession, uh, you know, while trying to do us uh, good, and, and in many cases, obviously, they do, mm. um, they've actually in, unwittingly done us a lot of harm. You know, you talked about fracking and the damage done to the environment, and then you've mentioned antibiotics. Well, when you realise that 90% of the cells in your body are not human, they're bacteria, mm. and that they have an enormous impact on your health, and then we go and drop these atomic bombs called antibiotics straight into our what scientists call our microbiome, our gut yeah. bugs. Yeah. And then we wonder why we're suffering from so many conditions. And uh, this is uh, becoming even uh, generational because uh, grandma had antibiotics and then when she gave birth, uh, she passed on a depleted microbiome mm. to her offspring and then the same thing happened to her daughter and now we're down to the grandchildren and they've got less and less bacteria and um, many scientists think that this is the cause of autism uh, and many other diseases wow. that we're suffering from today. Yeah. Where does dairy come into this uh, as far as the work that you've well, done as a research microbiologist? Well, dairy is, is interesting in that it's extremely nutritious, which is why we feed our offspring as mammals uh, mm. with dairy, uh, our own dairy, uh, preferably. Uh, but uh, And if you've got too many bad bugs down in your gut because you've selected for those with antibiotics, mm. Mm. then you're feeding predominantly bad bugs. And then they produce toxins or damage your intestine. And then things like gluten and casein from dairy, gluten from obviously bread and so on, uh, passes through into your bloodstream and causes antibody reactions yeah. and you get sorts of food sensitivities. Mm. And there is a myth that you can replace the bacteria that have been wiped out by antibiotics with probiotics. Mm. You can't. They're different cultures, different species altogether. But what you can do is if you can get the very best strains of probiotics that are capable of suppressing the bad bugs to the uh, highest degree. Yeah, so what you're saying is, that, well, generally we're carrying around these bad bugs, and yeah. would, you, would you say probiotics could be a cleanser of some kind? Well, what they can do is, re if you've got the right strains, mm. and oils ain't oils when it comes to probiotics, but if you've got the best possible strains and you can boost them to the highest possible levels with prebiotics, which mm. are fibre, mm that uh, act as sort of a packed lunch yeah. for the probiotics. If you can boost those up into the trillions because you're trying to deal with 90 trillion bacteria down in your gut, then you've got a very good chance of having dramatic impact on all sorts of diseases like Crohn's disease and so on. Yeah. Well, the impact, uh, impact for me was the bowel cancer, of course, and I had a, trouble, a lot of trouble with bowel movement, and uh, I've got to say the probiotics certainly have helped that. Uh, in the old days, Mum used to say, come here, you need some castor oil. So, That's right. <laughs> did you know much about the, pro the properties of castor oil? <laughs> well, I, I imagine that there are um, compounds in it which mm. uh, would inhibit uh, bad bugs. Mm. Um, you know, uh, I, I can't say that I've ever studied castor oil. It's a bit out of vogue these days. It is. It? It's very much the 60s, that one. 
<laughs> Very much the 60s. Well, the probiotics out there. Look, I know that you're involved with uh, a mob called Pro Good and you're responsible for some of the stuff that uh, is there. So maybe people should lo- know a lot more about it. You can go to www.progood.com.au. That's www.progood.com.au and you'll learn a ho- whole lot more about this great product. Thank you for that, John. Okay, thank you, Greg. All the best. Uh, John Elliman explaining just a little bit about probiotics because I, I, I asked the question around here today. I said, do you know much about probiotics? It's interesting the nurses used to talk about it all the time and as I said, I took no notice. My son even said, you've got to get on to probiotics. Yeah, 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 whatever. <laughs> and then finally I did. It was good. So um, uh, the doctors didn't uh, say yay or nay, but I, I did notice the nurses seemed to know a lot more about it than the doctors. 25 after 8, the Super Radio Network. Good morning. Good morning.